Larry, difficult day, but thanks very much for being with us. Good to Thank see you, sir. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, Stu. You, know, you, you can't sugarcoat this thing. You can't. The economy looks absolutely awful. Would you tell us honestly, from your perspective, how bad is it? Well, look, um, obviously this comes from the exponential spread of the virus and the containment and mitigation measures that our health team has put together, which in effect uh, has shut down the economy or shut in the economy. So we are suffering through a very painful, very difficult um, economic contraction. Uh, that's the way I look at it. It's going to be temporary, is it but it's going to be very difficult. Is it depression, Larry? I, I, is it a depression, Larry? I've got Morgan Stanley coming out saying the second quarter we contract 38 percent, okay, on an annual basis, but that's a, an extraordinary contraction. That is a depression. Well, look, I, first of all, annualizing quarterly numbers, I think, in this case, because this is not going to last a year, is, is the wrong approach. I, I'll leave them to whatever their views are. My point is that the, the virus itself and the steps we've taken to mitigate the virus have interrupted uh, a very strong business prosperity, a very strong jobs prosperity, and the whole economy is suffering. And I do not think it's uh, going to get any better in the weeks immediately ahead. I do think, however, that this will prove to be temporary, that over the next four to eight weeks or so, I say that perhaps with hope, optimism, and some prayer, that's what the health people are suggesting. It's not going to last the rest of the year. I do believe, Stu, that we're taking steps to deal with this. We've got a, a $6.2 trillion assistance package on the books to help Americans keep their jobs and their families and their medium, small business. We can talk about that in a moment. This is not going to last throughout the year. And I do think that we will see a very strong economic recovery when this has played itself out. Now, we want to get the money out quickly. It's supposed to start going out today, $350, $360 billion. But we've got reports that some of the banks, the big banks, are not ready and cannot at this moment pump out the money. What's your response? Well, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not hearing the same. I mean, Secretary Mnuchin, who has led the charge on this, has been meeting uh, with, for example, you mentioned the big banks. And he has taken amendments to his proposal, changes to his proposal, and I think they are ready. I mean, all of us have been talking to the big banks uh, and others, community bankers as well. So I, I think this program is ready. It, it went through, you know, these things always have glitches when they start out. It is a massive undertaking, $350 billion. But at the end of the day, these are guaranteed loans. They will be forgiven if you cover your payroll and other expenses. Uh, you got eight weeks to do that. I, I think it's a tremendous opportunity, a 1% interest rate. Again, the U.S. government is guaranteeing these loans. And let me also say, for people who are looking to apply, they should be moving uh, rapidly. Um, any bank, I mean, any FDIC bank, Federal Reserve sponsored bank, cre uh, federal credit unions, all of those are eligible for this program, and it's not going to be hard uh, to put together. So I, I just I, I think the kinks will be worked out, and um, we're starting this up today, and there's already brisk demand, as there must be. Would you agree with the following statement? We can't get the economy back on its feet or even get the economy to come back until we start relaxing some of the stay-at-home orders, bearing in mind that we've got talk now of a national lockdown, not just state by state. Well, look, our health experts have suggested these mitigation procedures. The president, as you know, uh, extended uh, the stay-at-home orders guidance uh, for another month. Uh, I think it was the right decision to make. This is where you, prudence prevails. The health and safety of American people is the most important item here. So we have to go through this period and, you know, the testing, surveillance and all the other medical procedures are in place and they'll tell us, the health people will tell us when it's safe to start reopening business. Uh, of course, we want to get that done. This is a great country. We had a very prosperous economic uh, story, a blue collar story. You and I have talked about it for years. 
uh, January and February was very strong. But the virus came exponentially worse than anybody thought possible. So we're reacting to that by trying to create as much liquidity and cash to keep folks going here for the next couple of months yeah. while we come hopefully to an end of the virus's impact. That's what we're doing. We are, you know, just trying to keep folks going with uh, the largest assistance package in the history of the United States. And the payroll protection small business plan, which will keep payrolls alive and the business alive, that's a key aspect of it. But don't forget, Stu, I mean, look, we're deferring income taxes. We're deferring, we got a business, uh, business payroll tax holiday. We're deferring student loans. We're deferring all manner of mortgages, you know, no evictions, uh, no foreclosures during this period. Frankly, the private sector, I mean, this, to, I think President Trump's great credit for the first time in one of these crises, he has brought in the private sector uh, with its free enterprise values and their ingenuity. They are helping us across the board, uh, whether it's, you know, drugs, equipment, uh, testing, um, pr changing their production lines. I think that's a key element here. So we're doing what we can, but we can't move until uh, we are satisfied on the health side. That's the key issue. We'd love to open up the economy, but we've just got to wait for this, the right amount of evidence. I think Vice President Pence has been great on this. I think the President's been great. I think our health people have been great. Uh, the, the package that's going out today, I call it a rescue package. It's rescuing individuals who have been harmed through no fault of their own, rescuing small business. Got it. But look down the road a ways, do we need a stimulus package, a genuine stimulus package that uh, is intended to grow the economy? And if you want that, if you think we need it, what should be in it? Well, that, that's an interesting and, and important point. This is a rescue package. Uh, I like that word. Um, we're just trying to keep folks going. You know, that's liquidity and cash. And that's the intent here. And hopefully it'll play out well. Over time, once we get through this, I mean, Stu, I, I think our top priority right now is to execute this enormous assistance package, rescue package, as you call it. Let's get that done. A lot of pieces. You know, one little sidebar, no one's really talked about this. The Federal Reserve working with the U.S. government, you have fiscal policy working with monetary policy. You know, I talked to the Fed Chairman Jay Powell uh, I don't know, a few days ago, I lose track of time. And he was so pleased that he is fed and their various uh, lending programs were getting help and support from the fiscal side. That is to say, huge tax cuts and tax rebates. I mean, 175 million people, 175 million people are going to get direct checks along with the uh, small business protection and the other plans. So you've got fiscal monetary coordination. Let's execute this. All right, we're just really beginning. The unemployment side, for example, uh, Labor Secretary Gene Scalia has put out to the states the necessary $600 increase in the unemployment benefits. And unemployment is going to be a very significant problem in the weeks and months ahead. There's no question about that. So to help folks. Hopefully the states can distribute that. But this goes to the point of operational execution. That's our job number one right now. Down the road, uh, I think we can begin to look at creating additional incentives, free enterprise incentives to grow the economy. There may be an infrastructure bill uh, for, uh, you know, business expensing 100 percent. How about a zero capital gains tax for a year or two? There are all kinds of proposals out there. I'm not saying we're pursuing any right now. Just to answer your question, what will help this economy grow in the next three to five years after this pandemic has run its course? Sure, we need that conversation. Right now, though, we need to execute this phase three. That's the most important thing. Help Americans who are getting hurt badly by the effects of the virus. Can you give us some hope, Larry? Can we close out this interview with you on a positive note? What can we hope for in the not too distant future? Go. Look, I, 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 you know me. I've spent my entire career as an optimist. Some people don't like that, yeah. but that's the way I am. I believe I work for an optimist. In fact, two optimists, President Trump and Vice President Pence. We wouldn't be doing this if we, didn't, if we weren't optimistic. I think we have put together a very strong plan on the health side and the economic rescue side. Stu, this is not going to go on forever. 
This is a temporary problem. Okay. The coronavirus is running its course. We are creating therapies, medicines, and ultimately vaccines. We have different procedures in place uh, that will stay with us. You know, it's kind of like 9-11. Remember, 9-11 came, life changed. I mean, we had in airports metal detectors, just to use one small thing. A lot of things are going to change how we live our daily lives, but we are Americans. We will adjust already. Individuals, communities, churches, small business, everybody is adjusting and everybody is pitching in. Never seen the country so strong. Okay. So, yes, of course there's optimism. <laughs> this thing is not permanent. Everybody knows that. So we've just got to put... Just get through, with a little hope and prayer, let's get through the next bunch of weeks. That's my best advice. Play by the rules, play by the guidelines, and we will get through this. Yes, you're darn right I'm optimistic. That's in my DNA. Can, can I reverse myself and ask one more question? The president's meeting top oil executives today. The energy industry in America is flat on its back. I mean, it has crashed. What can the administration do for our energy producers? Well, look, in terms of the pandemic and the collapse in demand, there's nothing we can do right away. All right? There may be some issues, uh, smaller items that I I'm going to leave on the table for that meeting. I, I helped organize that meeting. But one thing the president has already done uh, is he has spoken a number of times uh, with the leaders in Saudi Arabia and Russia and has sent, told them to stop colluding and uh, throwing oil on a market that is already vastly supplied by oil in relation to the collapse of demand. He's essentially said to them, you need to cut back your production because you're having this little war between Saudi Arabia and Russia and that is damaging everybody. That's damaging consumers, motorists, homeowners. It's damaging the frackers and our energy business. U.S. the number one energy producer in the world. We will stay that way. But when we see that kind of collusion going on for no good purpose except perhaps to hurt the United States, we have to take action. The president has taken action, and he expects that there will be a considerable pullback in energy production by Russia and Saudi Arabia. And you can see in the market, I think, price oil up 7 or $8. We can't solve the pandemic demand problem right now, but we can make sure there's a level playing field and stop cartelization that might damage this country's future and, by the way, the future of everybody around the world that has to deal with energy. So we can do that, and I think you'll see president's negotiations bear fruit very soon, Stu. Larry Kudlow, we want to thank you for taking time out to be with us today. It is much appreciated, and we hope thank to you. see you again real soon. Larry Kudlow. Thank you. Appreciate yes, sir.